Hi, my name is Brian Zinchuk. I am the editor of Pipeline News, and I've been writing a column for oh, about 28 years, and I've been doing Pipeline News for about 12 years. And this is an experiment. This is the first time I'm doing a video column. So it is based on some recent columns I've done, and there will be a few things that may change very slightly from the original version, but here goes. So this one came out on the 26th of March, right in the middle of the COVID crisis, and it was called Not Another Drop of OPEC Oil Ever. Here goes. I've held my tongue for a week now, so I'm just going to say it. Canada as a whole, and Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Newfoundland in particular, would be in a much better place now to deal with the COVID-19 crisis if the federal government had not done everything it could since 2015 to stymie the oil and gas sector, killing around $200 million in projects and investments. We just had an emergency session of Parliament with about 10% of the MPs in their seats to pass this emergency spending measures beyond anything we've ever done before. The federal government is saying people will still be able to make their rent and mortgage payments and that those who lose their jobs due to COVID-19 outbreak will get $2,000 per month. Yet, on March 25th, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announced nearly a million people had already applied for employment insurance benefits. Prior to this crisis, the largest economic crisis we have seen ever, the federal government was running budget deficits to the tune of $28 billion per year. Oil-producing provinces were also facing very tough deficits, although Saskatchewan had, until just recently, and oh so briefly, clawed itself out of that hole. Now governments will help everyone, in every sector, as nearly the entire economy is shut down to flatten the curve and slow the spread of the deadly coronavirus. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate that. I am quite literally three times over one of the vulnerable ones. But this is where the anti-oil, anti-energy policies have come home to roost. The price of oil has crashed tremendously around the planet. It will stay low, not just because the Saudis, UAE, and the Russians are flooding the market, but because the demand side has totally collapsed. If airliners aren't flying, commuters aren't commuting, consumers aren't consuming, and most economic activity grinds to a complete halt because everyone has to stay home, we will see the largest drop in oil consumption likely ever over the short term. That is being reflected in world oil prices. Today, March 26th, as I wrote this, West Texas Intermediate was trading for $23.29, all prices in US dollars. Brent was 29.10, but what is truly horrible is Western Canadian Select was down to $9.09. BN and Bloomberg reported later in the day it was down to 6.45. Now, since I wrote this, it hit $5.06 as a closing price. So not only is the bulk of Canadian oil production worthless, it is worth less. It is worth it's substantially less than Brent or WTI, either of the world benchmarks. If we had the Energy East and Northern Gateway pipelines in place, as they were supposed to be operating by December 2018, we would have had at least been getting something closer to the Brent price. That would mean, even in these times of horrible oil prices, we would still be getting something, but we're not, because those pipelines were never built. When you factor in transportation costs, a 645 barrel really gets you close to nothing, as in worthless. You're basically giving it away, and the oil you give away is never coming back. There's almost no point in producing it or putting it in a pipe. This is exactly the conclusion Suncor Canada's largest oil producer came to when it decided on March 25th to shut in one of two process trains on the 195,000 barrel per day Fort Hills oil sands mine 
as Bloomberg reported. You can expect to see very large swaths of oil production that's tied to WCS shutting in in short order. There's simply no way to keep operating at those prices for many projects. This will undoubtedly hit the heavy oil sector in northwest Saskatchewan very hard, and our oil revenues just as hard. Heavy oil is half of our production in Saskatchewan. So what could the federal government do right now to right this capsizing ship? It could ask TransCanada, sorry, TC Energy, to dig up its copious plans for Energy East and tell them, order them, to start today. Have dirt moving in eight weeks. If necessary, the feds should back it financially. A much more difficult but possible approach would be to get the Canadian Prosperity Pipeline people to do it, but they would be starting from a much further place back, basically from scratch. TC Energy has all the plans in place, ready to go, already. I don't know how one goes about socially distancing themselves on a pipeline crew, thinking back to the several years that I worked on such crews. But a lot of processes already are. The welding crew might be a bit tougher, and busing could be problematic. But the right-of-way work could start right away. Doing so would put a lot of people back to work, not just in construction, but in steel manufacturing. It might require a federal mandate of lower wages than a typical union rate, but at least it would be work, much like the many relief projects of the Dirty Thirties. Better to build infrastructure than to do nothing. The other reason to do this is to say, once and for all, we will not accept another drop of OPEC oil on Canadian shores period. They are the ones who chose this time of crisis to attack us with economic warfare, and it truly is an attack. If oil demand is dropping so far, so fast, surely there is enough light oil produced in Alberta, Saskatchewan, and Newfoundland to fill the refineries of central and eastern Canada. Put it on rail from the prairies and tanker from Newfoundland, but for the love of all that is holy and Canadian, Please use Canadian oil today and forevermore. Do this right now until Energy East is built. If we are going to have millions unemployed, and if we are paying them anyhow, surely we can ramp up construction on this pipeline and get it built and operational in a year, not two or three. The plans are in place. Move quickly. Alberta needs this, desperately. So does Saskatchewan and Newfoundland. Canada as a whole needs this. Start today. Put people to work. And let's say to hell with OPEC forever. So that column came out a few days before Alberta and TC Energy decided that Alberta was going to invest one and a half billion dollars Canadian and uh, do guarantees for another six billion dollars into building the Keystone XL pipeline. Now that's wonderful news. It, I waited 12 years to write that story. 12 years. When I first started doing pipeline news, my whiteboard had Keystone Pipeline, Alberta Clipper, Keystone XL. We need that. And we also need TMX. But neither of those get Eastern Canada, get Ontario and Quebec, principally Quebec and New Brunswick, off of Saudi oil, a place where they beat women with a stick. So, should we be buying any more OPEC oil? No, we shouldn't. So right now, yeah, we can use rail cars to do it. And maybe that's the solution. Maybe we just do rail cars if we don't build Energy East. But we need to stop using their oil. We need to give our oil a Canadian market because if the price is so depressed because we can't sell it to the states, why are we buying anyone else's oil? Give this a shot. So this is my first time at doing this. I'm going to try a few more here. And if you like it, please subscribe to my channel. And please watch for it uh, online. Uh, Pipeline News can be found at PipelineNews.ca. Uh, on Twitter, it's Pipeline News, uh, capital S, capital K. Or... 
You can find me, Brian Zinchuk, Z-I-N-C-H-U-K, and Brian spelled with an I, the correct way, uh, on LinkedIn. You can track me down there, too. So thank you very much, and I look forward to doing the next one.